I want to bring into the conversation now Oklahoma's Lieutenant Governor um, Todd Lamb, uh, who we spoke with last week during the devastation and the aftermath in Moore, Oklahoma. Uh, Mr. Lieutenant Governor, we appreciate having you with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're welcome, Rachel. What are you able to tell us thus far about damage or the scope of, uh, uh, sc- scope of what these, these storms have done thus far? Uh, well, it's, it's very preliminary right now. My office been in contact with the emergency operations uh, center here in Oklahoma, and I visited my chief of staff just moments ago. And it's just too early to tell uh, as far as uh, any assessments at this time. What we do know from the, uh, from the utility service, this was about 15 minutes ago, uh, just over 31,000 are without power right now, and I visited with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. This is an unofficial, unofficial report, Rachel, mm. but visiting with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, we have some uh, significant roads and, and part of uh, interstate byway, not the major interstate, but that are under water right now. Some of the main thoroughfares to the metro area, which may, makes uh, getting from one place to another very difficult. I expect that to recede, but those are just some initial reports right now, and we still have tornado sirens going off. We have been hearing uh, from K4, from our affiliate in Oklahoma City, too, especially um, about flash flooding and some roads being underwater, some parking lots being underwater. Do you expect that that will affect any evacuation plans or the ability of rescue, cru- rescue crews and emergency responders to get where they need to get to? Uh, it, it certainly will. And I know I heard the guest you had a moment ago. I think she was at Will Rogers World Airport, our major airport in Oklahoma City. And that's where the storm headed, and there were touchdowns of tornadoes around the area, not actually at the airport. But the uh, one of the major junctions, the Amarillo uh, Junction, I believe it's called, uh, is underwater right now, parts of it at least. And just if you want to, you know, evacuate, if you want to go for help, if you need first responders or, um, you know, an ambulance, ambulance went by my house a moment ago. Um, I think we, they were turned around in the wrong neighborhood. But uh, it certainly will when you have that high water, it'll, it'll impact everything. When we hear, we're hearing advice um, from the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, for example, that motorists who are on or around Interstate 40 should leave the highway and should take shelter. What kind of shelter should people be looking for if they are caught out on the road and they're told, they're listening to the media and they're advised to take shelter? What kind of shelter? Well, uh, that's, that's a very tough uh, question to, to answer, of course. Uh, you always want to get off the road in a storm, particularly when there's potential for tornadic activity. What is, uh, you know, heightened even more with this storm that's going through Oklahoma right now, it was following Interstate 40 for some time. I believe it's veered off to the south side. And I'm looking at a lot of reports right now. I think that's gone south of Interstate 40. But, of course, you want to you get off the interstate, uh, get out of your vehicle, find a structure of some sort, and hopefully a concrete structure above ground, or if you know of a public storm shelter nearby, uh, evacuate to that location as quickly as possible. That's why it's always, it's tough to do, Rachel, sometimes, but it's important to try to have that plan ahead of time. But if you're a traveler and you're unfamiliar with, with the weather activity or unfamiliar with, with your area, just try to get off that, ro- that road as quickly as possible and seek some sort of shelter that looks safe and secure. It was, cl- it was clear for a long time today that it looked like there was going to be severe weather. Uh, these tornado warnings and watches were in effect um, in advance of these storms rolling through directly. Do, do you feel that uh, people in and around Oklahoma City were prepared for this, knew it was coming? Did people leave work and get to places where they could be safe uh, in advance of this storm rolling through? You know, I think it gives me an opportunity to brag on the meteorologists we have in Oklahoma once again. Uh, what they were talking about, possible tornadic activity yesterday and the day before. Uh, we had some outbreaks of tornadoes in the last uh, two to three days in Oklahoma. We had a lot of advanced warning as far as its potential for tornadic activity. And as I've talked to you, Rachel, the tornado sirens have gone off once, maybe twice. I think that's probably the eighth or ninth time in northwest part of Oklahoma City, where I am right now, that we've had tornado sirens go off. And it's, it's, it's a warning system, whether it's the warning of the sirens themselves or the meteorologist warning us for the potential for tornadic activity. Uh, I think the warning signs have been out there, and I, I want to thank our meteorologists for doing a fantastic job once again. Lieutenant Governor for the great state of Oklahoma, the nation's uh, thoughts and prayers are with you again tonight as you, uh, as you hunker down there, sir. Thank you very much for being with us. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Rachel, and you're welcome. Thank Good you. luck. All right.